you know, I think Ethereum right now has an advantage over Bitcoin as a store value and transactional because as more people get into NFTs, all they're going to know is Ethereum. Ethereum is the dominant crypto application. You know, your best strategy would be to buy it and then mortgage your house and buy some more. All right. So Ethereum is currently the second largest cryptocurrency in terms of market cap. And while it has always trailed Bitcoin, it has always been number two. Many people are expecting that this could change soon in the so-called Ethereum flipping when Ethereum's market cap surpasses Bitcoin. Ethereum. Ethereum is crazy underrated. A recent study done on over 40 cryptocurrency experts across the entire industry, across multiple disciplines, they all are saying that Ethereum on average could reach a price of $18,000 per coin. And some of them are saying it could go as high as $100,000 per coin. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about everything going on with Ethereum, a couple of important things with the numbers, um, with ETH 2.0, recent Ethereum upgrades. After that, we're going to talk about what is going on with these price predictions. And at the end, we're going to go over one thing in particular that I see very few people talking about, but I think is the key differentiator between Ethereum and every other cryptocurrency out there. So if you enjoy this sort of content, well, then please be sure to like the video down below. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. And if you want to see what stocks I am buying and selling in real time, well, then make sure to join our Patreon group. You guys can see access to my $700,000 portfolio on Robinhood, my $200,000 portfolio on Webull, and you also get access to two of my seven figure portfolios on both Charles Schwab and on JP Morgan and Chase. So if you like to see exactly what I'm buying and selling in real time, you want access to live streams, well then make sure to join our Patreon group using the link down below. So Ethereum is a cryptocurrency that has been around since 2015. It is the second largest cryptocurrency in terms of market cap. When we look at market cap right now, Ethereum is number two. They have a market cap of $268 billion versus Bitcoin which has a market cap of $720 billion. And it doesn't really matter the market cap as much as that Ethereum has always trailed behind Bitcoin, but it has been gaining in recent months and over the last couple of years. So right now, the couple of important numbers with regards to Ethereum is that ETH 2.0 just surpassed 200,000 validators. And now there's over $14 billion staked in Ethereum. And this is pretty significant when we start to consider that the total market cap of Ethereum is right around 268 billion dollars. So it's over 5% of all Ethereum is staked right now. This is very important because one thing is we've talked about on the channel that now Coinbase, which is one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world, it gives people the opportunity and the access to stake their Ethereum for ETH 2.0. And ever since this has come out, we have seen the number of um, the amount of money staked in ETH 2.0 increase dramatically. One thing that is interesting about these numbers is that ETH 2.0 staking has has continued to increase and has increased dramatically over the last couple of weeks and throughout 2021. Just in June of 2021, we had seen that there were roughly 180,000 validators, but now that number has climbed to over 200,000. So the number of validators have grown over 10% in the last one month alone, which is absolutely incredible, which shows you how many people believe in Ethereum long term. Because whenever you stake your Ethereum, you're essentially saying, look, I believe in it long term. I think it's going to do extremely well and I'm OK not having access to selling it for months for, you know, a couple of months. And that's essentially what happens with um, when you're staking your Ethereum. But in addition to this, there are a couple of important things that have been going on with Ethereum over the last couple of months and have been on their agenda over the last couple of years, and that is with um, ETH 2.0, which is a major upgrade, which is going to move it from its current network of proof of work to the highly anticipated proof of stake and the other upgrades, which have been the London hard fork, which will introduce EIP 1559, um, makes Ethereum essentially a deflationary asset and addresses a lot of issues that people have been concerned about. So those are the important numbers with Ethereum, but let's get into exactly what is going on with these price predictions. So right now, according to a recent study done, it says that the study was done on 40 cryptocurrency experts and they predict that Ethereum will reach um, $18,000 by 2025. That is their average price prediction for 2025. And they say that on average, they expect it to reach $4,500 per coin by the end of 2021. 
short term, they are very bullish on it. And much like the rest of the cryptocurrency market, right now, institutional investors are still make up a very small percentage of the market. And once we start to see investment vehicles like Ethereum Grayscale Trust, and we start to see, let's say, more opportunities and more ways that institutions can invest in crypto, not just Bitcoin, but in like Ethereum and altcoins, I think we're going to see all of these increase dramatically. Right now, we have over a dozen Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs, and I think when those are approved, that will definitely help out Ethereum. But short term, according to experts, what they are saying is that 27 of 42 experts predict, believe that Ethereum will reach at least $4,596 per coin by December 31st, 2021. They all have their different reasons, but for the most part, what they are saying is that with Ethereum right now, ETH, um, the Ethereum London hard fork, is gonna make Ethereum a deflationary asset. They're saying that right now there are a number of level two networks, institutional adoption, adoption mass utilization, DeFi and DApps are all continuing to develop and rise and are all contributing factors as to why they are very bullish on Ethereum in the short term. One thing that we have always talked about on the channel is that I like Ethereum because it has way more practical use cases than a coin like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is treated as a digital gold. And a lot of institutions invest in it because it's the largest, it's the less, it's the least risky. And when you talk about Bitcoin, you say all oh, the price of Bitcoin is moving up or down. That's essentially you're talking about the market because Bitcoin is, you know, over 40% of crypto market cap. So people look at Bitcoin really right now because it is a lot safer and institutions don't look at these other coins just yet. But in terms of actual use cases, I like Ethereum a lot more because it has decentralized finance applications, it has smart contracts, it has NFTs, and there's so many layer two solutions being built for Ethereum right now, such as Polygon. Polygon is a crypto that we talked about a lot, and you were seeing that there are a lot of solutions, a lot of additional dApps that are being built that are gonna help continue to grow um, Ethereum. Anyways, that is why they're saying Ethereum could reach that in the short term. Long term though, they're saying that they are very bullish on it as well, giving it an average price target of about $17,810 per coin by 2025. Some people are predicting that it could reach as high as $100,000 per coin by 2030. But according to experts, they're essentially saying that right now, 71% um, of all experts, they think that Ethereum moving from proof of stake um, that Ethereum moving over um, to proof of stake is very, very important for Ethereum long term. They're saying it's going to make it significantly more energy efficient. That is one of the biggest concerns from institutional investors right now. And they're saying, look, Ethereum is going to be 99% more energy efficient when it finalizes this ETH 2.0 upgrade when it moves from proof of work to proof of stake. In addition to this, the other things going on is that they're saying once it is more energy efficient, institutional investors are probably gonna pick this over investing in Bitcoin because one of the biggest concerns about Bitcoin, one of the things holding them back right now, and in a lot of crypto is there have been a lot of concerns about energy consumption. We've seen Elon Musk and Tesla come out and say that they were gonna accept Bitcoin. They accepted it for a couple months, then they said they're not accepting Bitcoin because of energy consumption. And that, you know, with a Bitcoin, it's getting a little bit better and it, they're getting to use more renewable energy sources. But the bottom line is Ethereum can solve a lot of these problems in terms of energy efficiency, energy consumption. It can solve a lot of, and it has just a lot more use cases with DeFi applications, smart contracts, NFTs, and all the other use cases that it has versus Ethereum. One issue that the, some experts say long-term right now. And for this price prediction, they're saying one of the big challenges right now with Ethereum is that it is not able to process that many transactions per second. Yes, that's gonna increase with ETH 2.0, but one of the big things with Ethereum being able to surpass Bitcoin in terms of market cap is that it's gonna to have to be able to scale up the number of transactions per second. And if it wants to become the number one cryptocurrency in the world, it's going to have to be able to handle significantly more transactions. So whether that's just Ethereum with ETH 2.0, whether that's layer two solutions providing you know additional um, benefits like Polygon, well, either way, it's gonna have to be able to scale up so it can handle 
like mass adoption, worldwide adoption of Ethereum. And lastly, the one thing I wanna go over, which not many people are talking about, is what is going on with other countries. And I think this is pretty important. So right now we are seeing a number of countries around the world. We're gonna start off with this. Um, like for example, the Bank of Israel. Bank of Israel has been testing um, and doing a lot of research into creating their own central bank digital currency. And rather than looking at Bitcoin, they looked at Ethereum for how it functions and actually testing. For example, they saw that Ethereum, they used it in a certain, a couple of different studies and for research. And they said that in this pilot program that they did in this closed environment, what they did is they used Ethereum to be able to, um, see if you could transfer title of a car ownership from one person to another. They use smart contracts to be able to do it. So for example, when someone paid another person a certain amount in Ethereum, well then it automatically sent that car, uh, that car title from one person to another. And that's just one possible example of Ethereum being used in real life. So this is something exciting because what they said is that they didn't use Bitcoin, they didn't use Cardano, they looked towards Ethereum as a model for how to develop their own central bank digital currency. And while this doesn't directly benefit Ethereum, we are seeing other countries look towards Ethereum as well. And instead of making their own central bank digital currency or trying to replicate Ethereum, they're just deciding to use it. For example, India. India just came out within the last, you know, with, on, in July of 2021, the end of July 2021. And they said that um, India is using Ethereum blockchain to verify diploma certificates. Um, there's a startup called Legit Doc, which is implementing a credential system using the Ethereum blockchain. And this is something very important because everyone um, over the last couple of years, we have seen that um, we have seen that there's been an increase in number of people forging government issued documents over the last 10 years. And with Ethereum and its network, and we have smart contracts, all of these things are gonna be able to make it much more secure, much harder to forge, and it's gonna help with not only diplomas, but also so many other things in um, the society moving forward. So what we're seeing is that the government of Ma, this government in India, a specific place in India, they, I'm not even gonna try to say it. They recently announced a partnership with Indian blockchain startup Legit Doc to implement this credentialing system. They said that they have an active work order from the government and they're in talks with other governments around the country as well. So this is exciting because anytime we see a company like Legit Doc or any company that is you know, being built on the back of Ethereum, when they sign new partnerships, that's gonna mean more money flowing into Ethereum's network. That's gonna mean Ethereum is continuing to grow because Ethereum is much more than just an investment. Every single company that base, that is built on the back of Ethereum's network is going to help Ethereum continue to grow. And that's one of the main reasons why I think it's gonna overtake Bitcoin in terms of market cap, why I think that $18,000 price target is definitely a reasonable goal and a reasonable price target because like Bitcoin, is great. People are going to put it on their balance sheets. Um, a lot of institutions invest in it because it's the safest right now and it gives them exposure to crypto, but it doesn't have all of these use cases that Ethereum has. So Ethereum is going to grow exponentially as more companies build their entire business on the back of Ethereum. So we'll see what happens, but right now that's what's going on with Ethereum. I am currently invested in it. I've been adding more over this entire, um, over the last couple of years. I just continually add more dollar cost average into it, but we're getting to a very exciting point for Ethereum because it's getting closer to Bitcoin in terms of market cap. We're seeing that more companies are starting to build dApps on it. We're seeing that um, in terms of upgrades that are taking place. Um, the London hard fork, ETH 2.0, all of these are gonna make uh, Ethereum much more energy efficient. They're gonna make it a deflationary asset and they're gonna solve a lot of issues that institutional investors are concerned about right now. So that's what's going on with Ethereum. Let me know what you think, but this is what um, the recent study done on over 40 experts have to say about Ethereum and what I have to think as well. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, um, make sure to subscribe. And if you want access to what I'm buying and selling in real time, you want access to our seven figure portfolios well then make sure to check out our patreon group using the link down below if you like it make sure to join if not well i'll see you tomorrow in another episode see you guys